with Texas Tech basketball coming up to empty in Vegas. What is next for Coach Beard and the Red Raiders? With a win against Tom Brady and the Patriots, can the Texans survive the AFC South? After an Alabama loss to Auburn, how will this affect the arrangement of the college football rankings? And who will be the number four seed in the college football playoffs? Find out next. MCTV Sports 101 starts now. Hey there, sports fans, and welcome to MCTV Sports 101. I'm Austin C. And I'm Ryan Heller. Texas Tech went into Las Vegas hoping to get some good resume-building wins as they hoped to look impressive throughout the season. Sadly, that was not the case as they lost to Iowa 72-61 on Thursday and to Creighton 83-36 on Friday. The Red Raiders will now head to Chicago to face DePaul on Wednesday at 7.30. Austin, what do you think happened in Las Vegas? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I did not get a chance to catch the Iowa game, so I don't know uh, anything much about that. The Creighton game, however, uh, from what I saw, and I saw the second half of that, it, lo it looked like we were, playing, we were doing good. Uh, it, I think we were throwing up too many threes. Because we were missing them. Yeah, well that, well, that, but I think they were taking them unnecessary threes is what I'm going to say. I think they were ta taking them in unnecessary situations. I uh, went back and looked at the Iowa game, and I think the same thing occurred in that game. But I mean, you got to give credit. I mean, you got to give credit to both teams. They, the shots just went down for them tonight. I mean, cre Iowa when we uh, had a forty percent from the three-point line, whereas we only had sixteen, sixteen percent. Four so. of twenty-four. Yep. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I mean, the shots just went down for Iowa, and then the same with uh, with Creighton. We had a little bit better in the three-point percentages at twenty-six. We went up by ten, but. I mean, they still had a four, like over forty percent three from the three. So, I mean, I mean, it, now we had a lot more. I think we had a lot more layups and a lot more of that. I think that's what kept us in that game, in yeah. both in both games for a while. So, and we had a chance to win the Creighton game. I mean, that, yeah. that game went to overtime. Yeah, and I still think we could have won that game. I just, I, to me, it looked like one, we ran out of gas in overtime, and two, it just. I, to me, it looked like the Creighton game. They were just out hustling us at the end. I mean, it looked like it, three. The refs don't know how to call a foul in the final seconds of uh, on Moretti, but uh, I'll let that one slide. Yeah, but you know what? It's not the first time our basketball team has gotten screwed over by the refs. <coughs> oh. Championship game. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that is still a sore subject here on, here at the Texas Tech campus. It so. is. It is. We do not welcome any of those refs who worked that game in Lubbock. We do not welcome them here at all. Um, anyway, but which I is funny because you do, probably do not know the refs who worked exactly. that game <laughs> in Lubbock. But I digress. Uh, to me, it just it just looked like that the uh, the Red Raiders. They just looked like it was like almost sluggish, sluggish and it just looked like it was it was dang near impossible just to get a rebound mm -hmm. in the last few minutes. They were just clearly out hustling us. They clearly wanted it more. I was watching that game, and 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 and, and like we we had to basically run into them head first just mm -hmm. to get a rebound away from them. And 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 to me, when you that just shows our hustle. That shows that it shows that they want it more than you. You cannot have that, mm -hmm. and it shows that they're out toughening you, which is which is not something you see from a Red Raider off uh, a team coached by Chris Beard. Usually, well, that's the first time they've had two losses in the pre in the in the preseason of games. So yeah, in the in the pre Big Twelve conference schedule mm -hmm. since Chris Beard, and uh, which which is not good because because they're already out of the top twenty five now, and that's not good. Yeah. So uh, as much as I'd love to continue this conversation about this game, so we have to move on to yes, the show. Yes, we do. So, well, up, up until the start of the game, everyone was doubting the Houston Texans as they took on the New England Patriots last night, thinking that the Patriots were just going to run over them. The Texans silenced those doubters as they stunned New England 28-22. Tom Brady tried to pull off some Brady magic near the end with, Ed with an Edelman touchdown, but with just 50 seconds left and their onside kick going out of bounds, it just wasn't enough. So, Ryan, was this more than a Patriots blunder or a statement win for the Texans? And I can already guess what you're about to say. Honestly, there are a lot of people who says that this is a Patriots blunder. And don't get me wrong, it is. But this was a statement win for the Houston Texans. They went in there, and, and everybody was saying the Patriots were just going to stomp them. Tom Brady just too much for the Texans. Belichick just way, way better coach than O'Brien, which he is, but he is <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> by it's 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 not even close. By, by a cliff, by a cliff. Let's say that we'll the, say by a cliff. The same cliff that Tom Brady's falling off of. But <laughs> but 
No, it, you're it, enjoying it, this way. Oh, too much. I am. You're, hey, I am milk. I'm gonna milk this until next week. Look, the Patriots. Went, if this is what you were like after this one, I'm, I was scared to know, find out what you were like, what you'd be like after the if the Houston Astros won. So. Oh God, you know it, man. You know it. I'd have been so, anyway, showing up here. Anyway, back, to, back to your point. But nah, see, to me, it was a statement win for the Texans because they showed that that they can compete. They showed that that they can come in and really really show to everybody that the Patriots really don't really have much of a receiving game outside of James White and Julian Edelman because they did man-to-man -man coverage most of the time and they most and now yes of course they let their guard down within like the last few minutes of the fourth quarter obviously mm -hmm. but other than that they said we're gonna double Edelman we're gonna double James White whenever he goes back to pass and 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 let's see if your other receivers not name Edelman and James White can do anything and they didn't because because that that was the whole thing James White and Julian Edelman, and to me, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, look at what Watson did: 234 yards, three touchdowns, and and they did this with only 52 total rushing yards from the Texans. Mm -hmm. And it, really, it, I I don't know how they did it because look at that: Mayers, Lacrosse, Watson, all of them—they really couldn't do anything. And I love that. No, you can't say much about Hopkins. He was one for one with six yards and a touchdown. So, but that shows how good this team really can be. The fact that. It was Kenny Stills and Darren Fells with the other two touchdowns, but yeah. See, I gotta, I, I, you're kind of so you're kind of saying this is both. This is not. A, it's kind of both. It's like it's not both. only a blunder for the hit for the Patriots, who we know have been dominant for the past f few years now. Two decades, well, if you want to go that far. Yeah. Oh, yeah so they, for, they took over the entire 2000s and yeah. probably 2010s. Pretty anyway, much. but it's also a statement win by the Texans because of how dominant that first half was i think what and i was driving up here i know you had a flight coming back which was but, delayed yeah, but, yeah so me and me and my cousin were driving back we looked at the we stopped looked at the score we saw it 28 9 i'm like this is what, right. what what happened what did i miss something's not right maybe maybe maybe, maybe the people who work the app maybe, maybe had the skill well that's what you switch. thought yeah. that's what you thought i mean i was i had a front row seat i'm like what the heck yeah so i i mean but, I mean, you get Brady still had a decent day. I mean, a 24 out of 47, 326 yards, and three TDs. So, can't fault the Patriots for trying to make that Brady magic and come back, but which he's known for doing. So. And I have a strange feeling that if, that if that onside kick did not go out of bounds, I think they somehow would have found a way, so thank God. Well, it's either that or this, this is going to be the same scenario in the playoffs. And, <laughs> and at this time, it's going to be in Gillette, so that's going to be, you know. Oh, that'll be fantastic. <laughs> But anyway, after this weekend, all the talk about Alabama was still, will they sneak into the college football playoffs? And that went out the window as they were defeated by Auburn 48-45. A lot of the game revolved around a questionable call at the end of the first half, as Auburn seemingly got an illegal chance at a last-second field goal. The Crimson Tide had a chance to send it into overtime with a 30-yard field goal, and that was missed. Alabama is now number nine in the polls, and is out of the top five for the first time in four years. Austin, what's your take on this? Hmm. Well, it's similar to the games from uh, Tech, Iowa, Tech and Iowa. I was at work all day Saturday, so I was not able to catch the game. However, I did hear about the controversy. And uh, I think you showed me right before the show started. And uh, from... The I, now I, there could like it's like you said with the app there could be like some new guy and he's changing things but from what I saw it looked like that Auburn had no timeouts they had none they get to field goal range they get he gets down as quickly as he can and then all of, and Alabama had a timeout or it showed that they had a time and then all of a sudden that disappears and I don't. They, get, they kick a field a field goal. I really don't know what happened, and honestly, to me, I feel like that whole thing should have been avoided because 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 the receiver because Bo Nix threw that pass uh, to Jatar. To well, Jatar I don't know. How, how do you know? How the heck you should know if you have timeouts or not? I mean, yeah. He threw it to, seriously, he threw it to Jatarvius Widlow, and instead of trying to, as soon as he got the first down, instead of trying to fall down and let them spike the ball so that they could kick that field goal, no. Instead, he trying to kept he kept running, trying to get more yardage. No, I, I, I honestly don't think that he was aware of the clock when he, when he was doing that. Because Which has happened was, before. That's happened plenty of times not before. Not the first time, but I think if he was, I think he would have fallen down after he got the first down, let, and then and that would, and Bo Nix can spike the ball, then he kick the field goal, then none of this would have been happening. But I really feel that that was an illegal play because that should not have happened. I understand why Saban was furious. I, I, I agree. I mean, he's, he, I think I agree why he's furious at that. I mean, you, you obviously, it should have been halftime right then and there. And 
Auburn's up or Alabama's up by seven. Instead, they're up by four, and they've got to deal with this monstrosity or this you know what word. Uh, yeah. But uh, but anyway, what what I take took away from that second half or from the rest of that game is that. Auburn fought for that game. I mean, they, they had two pick sixes. One of them for a, over 100 yards. Uh, easily. You had two pick sixes. You had, their kicker was a four for four. So he was perfect. He was perfect all the day. Claps off, hats off to him. You had three touchdowns. You had Bo Nix, 13 out of 30, 177 yards and a touchdown. And a rushing and a receiving touchdown. And a rushing touchdown, yeah. But you can't bl blame Mac Jones. I mean, he did, a, he did his best. He had a... I, my guess is a career high, 335 yards, four touchdowns. Four touchdowns. Two. He did have two interceptions, which really didn't which accordingly those were the two pick sixes. But I mean, he did, they did have a kick return for a touchdown, and then they had a they had a few rushing touchdowns. Same with Auburn. So I think Alabama could have easily won this game after I do the half. I think yeah, you could blame it on the controversy, but I I I don't. I mean. I think they had a lot more chances after that controversy than what people yeah. realize, and that I think that's probably going to be the problem for it this will. week. And for those of you who are watching, the viewers, go down to the comment section. Be free to let us know how you feel about this uh, controversial play. I'm sure we will get it live. Yes, we will. Always, we will read these comments and maybe even get back to you on that. We might even give you some shout outs. <laughs> well, now to make things even more interesting with the college football playoffs, who will get the fourth, fourth and final spot? Number nine. Baylor defeated Kansas 61 to 6. Number 7 Oklahoma defeated number 21 Oklahoma State 34 to 16. And number 6 Utah defeated Colorado 45 to 15. With conference champions week just up ahead, any one of these three teams could make it make it, but only one will get it. Assuming LSU beats Georgia in the SEC championship if game. So Ryan, who do you think will get the fourth and final seed in the play in the college football playoffs? To me, at the moment, I would say Utah. At the moment, because right now they have the five spot, mm -hmm. uh, and and Baylor's nine, Oklahoma seven. Mm -hmm. I think that right now all three of these teams control their own destiny. All they can do is just win the game. That's all they can do. Now, if you now if LSU wins, then and Utah wins, then I think that they are going to be the first one to be in because they are the one that's closer to number four. Mm -hmm. But so to me, all they have to do is just. Play their game against Oregon, not wet the bed. Yes, I use that phrase. Agreed. And they are basically in because they're just farther ahead of Oklahoma and Baylor. Now, if they lose to Oregon in the Pac-12 championship, then I believe, assuming that LSU wins, the winner of Oklahoma and Baylor, that will get in because, to me, I just Oklahoma, feel like it's going to Oklahoma is at number six, six, and they've got the bed. Or Oklahoma is now at number six. Baylor's now at number eight. Yeah. So that will probably be the best shot. And then that's also assuming if Florida – or I don't think Florida will get in as a 10-2 so. team. I think – uh, as for as for my pick, I'm I'm gonna actually go with Oklahoma on this one. Really, you think that they'll be, be able to sneak in? Yes, I think they'll be able to sneak it in. Now, the, and again, this is assuming if LSU beats Georgia. The, yeah. If not, we've got a whole other controversy, but we'll save that for later. Uh, what what I think is interesting, and here are the top here's the top six right now. You've got LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, Utah, and Oklahoma in that order. So conference championship, I think, is going to decide. Who is is going to decide? And if there's an upset, maybe one or two, the committee is going to be crucified. They are going they to are, have quite a day ahead of themselves. If so, if this season doesn't convince y'all to make it to an eight bracket team or more, then, then what is the point? Then, ah, uh, yeah, seriously, like, like, like. I truly believe this is the closest any college team has been. You have three undefeated teams. You have. Pro, let's see, one, two, three, four, or four. One lost team. Four, one, or five, actually. Five, Mem one Memphis team. is all the way down at 16. But Memphis ain't going to get it, though. Memphis. No. Uh, how is an 11 and 1 team who's underneath a bunch of 10 and 2 and one 9 and 3 team? Because, because the NCAA committee, they still don't respect the American Conference. They just still don't respect them. Uh, okay, that. The way that they respect the Power Five Conferences. I, it's surprising to me that they have more respect for the. Pac-12 than the American, but still it is. Or, what it or is. the Big 12 for that Big matter. Big 12, but but still it is what it is. I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not the one in charge. They are for some so reason. So I, I think Oklahoma finds a way to to get in there. And they, again, that is assuming they beat LSU Baylor. beats Georgia. And it, but I mean, it is going to be a very very close race. They are going to have a long day ahead of themselves when it comes to picking these. Uh, yeah. Brackets. It's going to be tough. Speaking of conference champions week, Eek, it's time for who you got for this week. It's conference champions week. Yeah. Eek. 
So today we will start, well, before we get into this, I would like to say our records. Uh, I somehow miraculously went 4-0 and last week, so I've bumped it up to 13-10 and compared to your 16 and, se and 7. So I'm, I'm down by 3. I'm down by, by, by 3. So uh, You might be able to pull a Brady comeback. You yeah, just might. You just might. Yeah, we will see. say you'd bring a little s s something for me if I, had, if I went 4-0? and Yes, I did. I did. Oh. I'm giving you my shades. Oh, no, yeah, well, yeah, oh, these are, you're giving me a new pair of shades. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Anyway, back to, back to who you got. To start it off, uh, I think we've got Ohio State versus, uh, who, who are they playing, in the big, uh, Wisconsin? Ohio State Ohio versus. Ohio State versus Wisconsin, the Big Ten. In the Big Ten Conference. So I ask you this, Ryan, who you got? This shouldn't be a surprise. I got Ohio State. I, I think that there's just going to be, I, this is going to be way too much controversy for the NCAA if Ohio State finds a way to lose this, but I don't think they will. I think Justin Fields is playing like a Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, you know, like he's got 20, he's got, he's got 2,600 passing yards. He's got 37 touchdowns to just one interception. And J.K. Dobbins is a 1,000-yard rusher as well. I think they're just going to be too powerful for, for Wisconsin. All right, I'm going to take these off before because I think I feel, I feel stupid in them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll save that for the end of the show. But uh, I agree with you. I think Ohio State's going to win this, I think. If what's I mean, this is a this is a very 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 big if, but if the top three teams all lose, can you imagine the are, field day? We are have? going through hell. Exactly. We are going to go through hell. So please, God, don't let that happen. <laughs> I'm going to laugh, but at the same time, I'm going to laugh if it does. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm pulling for. I got Ohio State on this one. I think they're rolling on all cylinders, and I don't think they're going to give this up. I don't think they are either. No. And up next. We got an easier one. We got Clemson facing Virginia in the AAC championship game. This one should be easy. Austin, who you got? Uh, do I even need to say it? <laughs> do I really even need to say it? I'll say I, it. I, I've got Clemson winning this one by a, by a lot. I mean, you, you've got another undefeated team in the ACC. They won. They 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 would have wanted Alabama back in this to, as revenge for oh, last yeah. year, but they're looking for another championship oh, yeah. to to add to their resume. I not just are the best team in the AAC, AAC. They're the only team in the AAC, as far as I'm concerned. I I can agree with uh, you on that one. I mean, but I mean, like you look at what Ju uh, Trevor Lawrence has done. He has been hot, man. In just in just the game since October 12th, he didn't start off great, but he's been 20. He's gotten he's been 22 touchdowns and just three interceptions since October 12th. That's just incredible. And Travis Etienne is on fire. Got over 1,300 yards. They're averaging over 45 points a game. I think Clemson's just going to be too much for them. I, I agree with you on that one. I think the top two are set. It's Ellis. It, well, for right, as of right now. As of right at, now. Or it's, I think number two is set for sure at yeah, Clemson. Ohio, yeah. Well, now it's time for the Big 12 championship. We have Oklahoma versus Baylor. Now, remember, Oklahoma is at six. Baylor is at eight. Ryan, who you got? You know, I, as much as I hate Oklahoma, as a Red Raider, I hate Oklahoma, but I'm going to go with Oklahoma. I think that, well, also, I just... After what happened with Tech and Baylor, I just want Baylor to get hurt so much. Yes, I am still bitter about that. That was crazy. But, yes, I want to, Yes, I think Oklahoma, I think Jalen Hurts is playing great. Uh, um, you got CeeDee Lamb, who could possibly be a first-round pick this year mm -hmm. if he goes in the draft. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be Oklahoma in this game. I'm going to do something real quick. That's the Tech side of me going, why would you ever root for Oklahoma? But now, we have to. the – Analyst side of me, the, sh this sh the side you see right now, uh, I have to agree with you. I do have to agree with you. I do think Oklahoma is going to win. They've got a lot more to lose than I think Baylor does, but, the, but, that could also, but on the, uh, as a point, that could also mean Baylor's got a shot. Exactly. Baylor probably wants revenge for their last conference game. Yeah. They, want, they want to upset they, – they, I mean, they're still in it. They've still got a – it's a slim shot, but they still have a shot. A lot of things have to go right, but it can happen. LSU – I think LSU has to lose. Georgia – or LSU has to lose. Uh, who, was, who are the other – Utah has to lose, and then they got to beat Oklahoma, yeah. and then Florida has to lose. Well, I actually, even if Florida wins, I still don't think they'll get in. Yeah, that's not going to – So, but I'm going with Oklahoma, even though there are some arguments that say Baylor could come back, could come up and win this, but I agree. Lamb could easily go first round. Jalen Hurts, easily a Heisman contender. That, I, I agree with you, Oklahoma. As much as it pains, I think, both of us to say it that. It does, because as a Red Raider, we are trained to hate Oklahoma. Agreed. <laughs> well, up next, we have the Pac-12 championship game between Utah and Oregon. Austin, who you got? Uh, I got Oregon on this really? one. Really? Yeah. I, I, know you're, I know you're rooting for that, uh, 
for that. Uh, I know you're rooting for that uh, Utah to make it in there, but I've got Oregon winning, winning this one. I think after their loss, they and they got knocked out of that four spot, five spot. They've got some blood. They they're like, we don't want Utah to win. We don't we we don't like Utah. We don't want them to win. We, that should have been us in there. That should have been us. But uh, so I, I've got Oregon. Uh, I think they can pull something out of their behind and uh, beat Utah in the conference final to get. Now I think Oregon was what Oregon. 14th. Well, okay, yeah, there's 14th. not a sh chance they can make it. Now, of course, if Oregon felt that they were the better team, they shouldn't have lost to a team as in Arizona State. But, I agree. You know, I agree with that. I do agree with that. I'm, you got I'm to go make with, some good points. But, but I'm going to go with Utah because I always, I do sometimes like pulling for the little guy. And I think uh, when it comes to the college football playoffs right now, in this day and age, the Pac-12 is the little guy right now. And I think I'm going to go with Utah. You're an underdog. You're, uh, you're, so, you're, sometimes you're, I like underdogs, but sometimes you'll see later – You'll see later. I do like the favorites every now and then, but sometimes I do like the underdog. And and I mean, you look at Tyler Huntley for the for for Utah, 16 touchdowns, two interceptions. Zach Moss, a thousand yard receiver, and mm -hmm. I think that right now they're uh, they're they're striking hot. I, I you make some valid points, brother, but I think Oregon's going to pull the, pull out this one, pull pull this one out for the win and spoil Utah's chances of making it to that college football playoffs. Now, before I say this last segment, I would like to point out that uh, we have agreed on three out of our four picks, and I am three behind you. So, if for some, so I'm so I think this is this is our last show for the week, for the fall semester. So I will not, I will sadly not be able to catch him up in points. I will be. If I if I went out again, I think I'll be one point behind, and and that's if you lose one or two. If, I lose, if you lose if I lose, two, if, if you I lose two, if you lose, if Utah loses, and then this next game, which happens to be the biggest one the of biggest, the week, the big one. To finish it off, we'll have the SEC championship between LSU and Georgia, number one versus number four. Ryan, who you got? First off, I don't know why this game isn't a. Uh, a primetime nationally uh, a televised game at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. This is a 3 o'clock game. I don't understand that at all. Well, uh, uh, I think that's for all SEC teams. Is they're all scheduled for like 3 o'clock. Oh, man. It's, like even Alabama, when it was Alabama, Georgia, it was still a 3 o'clock game. They got ripped off. I'm sorry, but they got ripped off. This is too good a game. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go with Joe Burrow and the LSU Tigers. I'm going with LSU. I, I got faith in them. Joe Burrow, 4,000 yards, 44 touchdowns, just six interceptions. Leading the Heisman me? race. Exactly, he's leading the Heisman race, and you know, and they got two thousand yard receivers: Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, thousand yard rusher, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Um, but yeah, I I think the LSU dude, don't you? He's shaking his head, but he knows he knows LSU's got this. I'm, I'm sorry, but LSU is the powerful team. They have shown their resume is better than anybody's. They got four top five wins. I just I'm, I'm sorry, but LSU is going to be too much. You make some valid points, brother. I do. I, you got Joe Burrow leading the Heisman race. They're, they're obvi LSU's obviously undefeated at number one. They deserve that. They've, they've, earned the, they've earned that spot. They've earned to be up there at number one. But you want some controversy, don't you? You're dang right I want some controversy. I got Georgia winning this one in the SEC championship against LSU. You're dang right I want some controversy in this one. I want Georgia beating LSU. Georgia goes up two spots. LSU goes all the way down off the list. And I want the committee to just think on this one. I want them to think. So you're dang right I got Georgia on this one. Well, before we go, also in the comment section, let us know your ideas of them possibly extending the College Football Plebs. Let us know some of your ideas. And maybe next semester we will give you, we will give some shout outs. Mm -hmm. we, love, we would love nothing more than your comments. If you think I'm crazy for choosing Georgia and LSU, you're dang right I'm crazy. But that's what makes this show entertaining. Because we could do because so, we say stuff like that. So, my friend, uh, this has been a fun semester. Yeah, it's uh, been a great semester. Yes, I we hope will... to see you next year, yeah, next semester. I hope to see you next. And semester we will continue this for basketball season, and we will. as well as baseball and some other sports. I look forward to it. And you know so, unfortunately, that is our show for this week's edition of MCTV Sports 101. Join us next semester for the latest big names and stories in sports. I'm Ryan Heller, and I am Austin Seat. We will see you the next time. Man, that one curved. You couldn't end on a high it note. It curved. I'm sorry. You it couldn't curved. end on a high it, note. It curved. I'm sorry.